Welcome to Church on the Way in Modafontein, Johannesburg. Good to have you join us today. Maybe you watch stirred your faith and your love for our Lord Jesus Christ. If you've been stirred through the preaching of God's Word, please like and subscribe to Church on the Way YouTube channel below. God bless you as you continue to follow Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning to Resurrection Sunday. It's a time to rejoice. It's a time to fix our eyes upon Jesus. And I want to just say in the name of the Lord, and I bring you the good news, He is risen. And we should be responding, He's risen indeed. And with that, I want to just encourage you, when we, de when we declare He is risen indeed, what does that mean? It means that we have risen in Him too. It was not just His resurrection, but was our resurrection. As Paul said, we've been crucified with Christ, but we've also been risen in Him. And yes, we will receive another resurrection that will be within, with Him forever, but we have been raised in Christ because today we are in Christ. So as we start here today, I'd like to open up in prayer and then ask our Heavenly Father to bless our time and then allow Him to encourage us through His Word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we can celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and us with him. And we rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit that was expressed in Christ and us in Christ, that we can be not only born again, but we can live a resurrected life, this eternal life that you've given us. So, Father, will you bless us today as we listen to your word, as we encourage through your word. May our eyes of our hearts and the ears of our of our spirits be open to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church today in Jesus name. Amen. The title of my message today he is risen and the scripture in Matthew 28 verse 6 says he is not here he has risen just as he said come and see where he lay and that he is risen Jesus said in Matthew 20 verse 18 to 19 he said on the third day he will raise to life. And if we understand the Jewish Passover, the Pesach of 30 AD, Jesus was raised to life on the third day. And that third day was the third day after his crucifixion and his death would be the Sabbath, would be the Saturday. And if we understand the, the Hebrew measurement of day, it was from sunrise to sunset. So Jesus rose on the third day. And it, we, we understand from scriptures, we don't give a clarity about it. But it tells us that he probably rose before the sunset of the Sabbath on that Saturday or the Sabbath, according to the Jewish measuring of days. So we want to rejoice in that, that Jesus has risen and we, we need to have that in our hearts as a faith going forward. So and again, I remind you the theme of this message today is he is risen. And I'd like us to use a, a text from John chapter 20, verse 10 to 18. And I read for you from John chapter 20, verses 10 to 18. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, that he had said these things to her. So we rejoice in this good news as the scriptures are written in the book of John. So I'd like to share in the context of this um, with Mary going to the tomb, we understand even at that day, um, Simon Peter and John went there and they were at the tomb and they didn't hang around and the, 
They were fearful of what was taking place at that time and went back to their homes. But Mary lingered. So I want to just share four points in, in respect of this, this portion of Scripture. And the points are four points. Number one, a love for Christ. Number two, the fears and sorrows of believers are often quite needless. How low are our thoughts of who Christ is? Number three. And number four, how kindly and graciously our Lord speaks of his disciples. So firstly, we look at number one, the love for Christ. We look at Mary Magdalene and we understand that Mary Magdalene was delivered from, from demons and God really brought her to a place of intimacy with him and she loved the Lord because she worked with him and she was in his presence a lot of the time. But we see here, once the Lord had died, her, her sorrow was great and she went to the tomb to go and see the body of our Lord. Her love for him caused her to linger at the empty tomb. You know, that was a reward. At that time, she saw the angels. They spoke to her. And then she was the first to see the risen Lord. She was first to hear his voice and she was first to hold a conversation with him. So we understand when we love the Lord, the Lord honors that love. And I want to say today the same principle that applied to Mary Magdalene as she, she lingered and loved the Lord and continued to seek him and to, to, to make him first in her life. God will honor us when we continue to love him. We continue to seek him. He, he will come to us and he will reveal himself to us. How the risen Christ revealed himself. Many of, of Mary's anxieties were allayed when Jesus responded to her. And the wonderful thing about our Lord is that he called her by name. And we understand from the scriptures that Jesus tells us that God knows the very hairs on our head. But I want to say he knows our name. And in the book of Revelation, it says that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus has written your name in his book and he knows your name. And we need to take consolation from that because that is a strength. That is something that the God Almighty knows your name. And this was a strength to, to Mary. And in the conversation there, we see that the, the word woman was used twice when the angels addressed her. And even when the Lord initially addressed her because he was concealing himself. But when he used her name, Jesus affirmed her. He gave her identity. He made her important. And I want to just say to you, the living God is still doing that today. He is calling you and chooses you by name. He knows your name. He knows you intimately. He formed you in your mother's womb. You are precious to him. Very, very important. Another interesting aspect, which is startling and um, I really believe incredible, is that when Jesus spoke Mary's name, there was a revelation of him. Before that time, he seemed to be hidden from her. And when, when the Lord responded to her, she responded in understanding that who he was. And she called out to him as Rabona. We understand that the word Rabona was used from the Galileans used it in the Aramaic. But another word was Rabbi, and it's very similar to the word Rabbi as teacher. But we see Rabona had a more respectful understanding. It was given to someone that was a great master and Lord. It was given to the president of the Sanhedrin at that time. So Mary responded with great respect and honor when she called out to the Lord. She, she said to him, Rabboni, respectful. So I want to say today is that the same Jesus today is out there and with you. And he wants us to respond to him. He wants us to hear his voice, to have a conversation with him. He wants us to know the witness of the spirit within us. Jesus still wants to reveal himself to every one of us. And, you know, that was a desire of Paul to know Christ. And I want to say it's no good just saying that I know Christ. But do you know him? And we just see this intimacy with Christ is, is a conversation. It's hearing his voice. It's obeying him. It's not being religious and it's not church attendance, even though that's important. It is about knowing the intimacy, the voice of God. Do you know the voice of God? Have you heard him lately? Have you had a conversation with him lately? Have you had a good heart to heart? Not when you've got problems. But just in the course of life. Have you spoken to him even today? Have you said good morning to him? He wants to respond to you. This is knowing Christ. 
And when you know him, that is eternal life, as the scripture encourages us. And secondly, the fears and sorrows of believers are often quite needless. And one of the greatest problems, even at that time, it was fear and anxiety. And we face that even in this time of, of being scared. Uh, but we see here the response when the angels and the Lord actually spoke to Mary. They both asked the question, why are you weeping? Obviously, they knew something more than she knew. And I know from our perspective, we would say, but we know why she's weeping. The Lord has died. But they knew the hope and the power of the resurrection. And uh, the question is, why are you weeping? And the question is, why? And the Lord always says that, why do we worry? Why are we anxious? And I want to just say our fears and anxiety are needless. We need to learn this lesson, the lesson of Mary. Don't needlessly worry. Don't let the fears, don't let the tears of life. Invariably, most of those things that you are fearing will never come to pass. So why do you fear? Let us pray rather for faith and patience that we can understand the ways of God. We can understand his purposes. May God reveal, even in this COVID-19, we don't understand but God has a purpose and God has a plan. And may we see that he is in total control. So I want to just say God wants to lead us in his peace and his joy. He doesn't want us to be caught up in fearfulness and sorrow and bitterness. But rather to find the way of his life, that eternal life. Thirdly, I'd like to look at this. How low are our thoughts of who Christ is? Once Jesus had revealed himself to Mary because that was an important thing because when he revealed himself to her she recognized and we've just discussed it called him Rabona but I want to just say to you is that this Jesus that died on the cross that was raised from the dead was a different Jesus that walked on earth he was now resurrected and he lived in a different dimension to where we live at the moment but I wanted to say Mary didn't recognize him and sometimes we don't recognize him. When he rose from the dead, what was he? He was truly God as well as man. And in his resurrected state, no longer did he hide behind the veil of a human body and work in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now he was in the place of his resurrected state, fully God. Yes, he still had to be ascended to the right hand of the Father. But he was God as well as man. And that's why the Lord actually gently rebuked Mary. Don't touch me. Don't cling to me. Because she was so full of exuberance and love and wanted to cling to the Lord and, and hug him. And he said, don't. Because there was something of a reverence and a fear and his holiness that needed to be contemplated that she didn't understand at that time. And neither do we. So I want to encourage you. We cannot always see Jesus as an earthly friend. We need to understand that he's the God over all, blessed forever, yet he's a man. He's the only one in heaven that is God and is a man. And I want to encourage you, that is an incredible privilege that we have. Is that why he can be our mediator? Because he understands us. He understands the concerns we have. He understands the temptations we have. He has overcome all those things. And that's why he's our blessed God. And he's our blessed Savior. And he's our blessed Lord. In 2 Corinthians 5.16 it says, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. May we no longer see Jesus from a worldly perspective. May we see him truly as God. Then fourthly, I like to cover this point. How kindly and graciously our Lord speaks to his disciples. The Lord asked Mary to take a message to his, to his brothers, to the brethren. And what was that message? And for me, this is an amazing message. It's a message of what Jesus had accomplished on the cross. What he had fulfilled and where he had redeemed us. And he brought us into this blessed assurance of not just our salvation. This is the statement that he said to Mary to go and tell the disciples. Go and tell them this good news. His Father is their Father, and His God is their God. And may we hear those words of the Lord Jesus that the Lord's Father is our Father, and the Lord's God is our God. And may that resonate in our hearts and understand the privilege 
and understand the position that God has actually placed us in. We are no longer sinners. We're no longer, in a sense, saints. We are sons. We, we belong to Him. We belong to His kingdom. We are so privileged, even as I shared last, last week about being kings. Here we are sons of our Heavenly Father. And Jesus wants us to understand that. And may we contemplate that. May we not get to a place where we live as, as sinners, but rather as sons. Not as, as servants. Yes, we serve, but we are sons. Never superior and never taking our place of, 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 of position more important than it really is. Jesus showed us the way to serve. But here he comes and he encourages us to be sons of our Father. So in conclusion, I'd just like to summarize again what we've covered. The firstly, our love for Christ, how important that is. Number two, the fears and sorrows of believers are often quite needless. Number three, how low are our thoughts of who Christ is? And number four, how kindly and graciously our Lord speaks of his disciples. So I'd like to pray with you, uh, especially in understanding what the completed work of the cross is. And Paul had an understanding of this, and we read that from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. And I'd like to pray that prayer over you and for you. It's something in powerful in praying scripture and seeing the power of that um, being evidenced in your life. And I'd like to pray for that now for you. Let us pray. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus, the glorious Father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you might know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his inheritance of the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and age, all authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to the head of everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. May that be a truth in your life. May you experience the wisdom and the revelation that you are now embedded. And may you experience the incomparably great power for us who believe. May God bless you. Well, as we come to the point of this time of this message, I'd also like to call on anyone out there that uh, you don't know the Lord Jesus. You don't know him as God as well as man. And he wants to reveal himself to you. But you need to call out upon his name because the scripture says that those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If that's you today, will you will you bow your heart? Will you submit willingly to the Lordship of, G, of the Lord Jesus? Yes, there's a confession, but your heart needs to submit. And are you submitted to him today? And I call upon you as we say a prayer and you follow this prayer with me. Will you submit your heart to him? And will you confess him as your Lord, as Mary Magdalene called him Rabboni, called him Lord. Will you do that? Will you acknowledge him as God? Will you acknowledge him as the Christ who died for us and paid the price for your sin and paid the price for your death? If that's you today, will you respond? Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and I respond to you today, Father, and I receive the free gift of the sacrifice of the Son of God that he may become my Lord. And today I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Saviour. And I ask that you would wash me and cleanse me from all my wrongdoing and my, my sin, that I will walk in a place of holiness with you and be born again. Take me and lead me to follow you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Then to the rest of us, this thing of the incomparably great power for us who believe, do not deny the power of God that's within you. Will you trust the Spirit of Christ within you that's empowered by the Holy Spirit, that power of Christ to flow through you again? Will you submit to that power? Will you stop walking in your own ability, but walking in the ability of Christ? For this is truly what the Spirit of Christ does as we willingly submit to him. The power, the incomparable power that raised Christ from the dead wants to work through us. May your life not be normal because this power of God 
is operational in your life. This is resurrection power. This is a truth of Resurrection Sunday. And may we comprehend what the Lord has actually done on the cross for us. May you go well in this day as you remember your Lord. May God bless you. May God enrich you. And from all of us here, we want to say we love you dearly. Continue to keep your eyes looking up. Keep looking ahead and see the resurrected Christ. For surely he has risen from the dead. Christ he has risen. God bless you all.